most every year we'll take our swing down and then reinstall it in the spring and it's about that time of year. What you're looking at here represents the final product from close to 15 years of tinkering, trial and error. And this design works pretty well to attach a swing to two large trees without damaging them. So in this video I'll talk a little bit about it and hopefully explain it enough so that you can understand how to make it yourself. Starting with the bull rope, this is like boat grade. It's pretty tough to find one this thick. It's lasted a long time and this is the most this is the most damaged spot on the entire rope. Notice how it's one piece that goes around and under the swing through these U-bolts and then goes up. We'll get to that in a little bit. But the swing itself is just a regular old 2x10. Although it's had year after year of polyurethane on it, which has kept it from rotting all these years. And also this top surface has some sand in the polyurethane just to make it scratchy so you don't go flying off. The board itself is just over 34 inches and the holes drilled for the U-bolts are back about one and three quarters from the end. Note that all the nuts and bolts and hardware, wherever possible, is stainless steel, but not everywhere. Moving up, let's take a look at how the rope attaches to the top. The rope goes up, wraps around a piece of PVC pipe three times, and then U-bolts attach it back to itself. In years past, I've only used one U-bolt, but now I'm using a redundant one because this year I'm raising the swing up a couple extra feet. So, each of these grab onto the PVC pipe, and the PVC pipe rotates on this, which in the middle is one quarter inch braided wire rope. But if you look closer, I put a vinyl jacket on it. There's some 3 8 ID vinyl tubing that the wire rope goes through and that reduces abrasion as the PVC kind of rocks on it. It also makes the swing silent. The PVC is one and a half inch inside diameter and its length is 36 inches if I remember correctly. And then inside of this piece of PVC this vinyl jacket is 12 inches longer than the PVC. Why does it stop short? Because if the entire length of the wire cable is encased in vinyl tubing, then if water should get inside, it can't easily get out, and then the cable will more quickly rust. And so, following the wire along, how does it attach to the tree? It just goes around into a big loop, and and three of these stainless steel wire clamps grab a hold of it. Three per side is a bit excessive. Admittedly, I'm using a third one for a redundancy, but it's worth noting that if you put this one on first, then you pinch this one, and then pinch this one, it will draw your wire nice and tight. One final point to make, the wire is also encased in vinyl right here, just to help prevent any damage to the tree. And in years past, it has worked very well. Wherever the tree ends, I just have a few extra inches of vinyl. That way, as I've said, any moisture that gets in will eventually come out. Alright, we've waited long enough. It's time to get this up in the trees.
Before you go, a few more pointers. While you're working on these U-bolts, they tend to fall down the rope, all the way down there. So cram a stick through here and it will save you a lot of grief. Also, notice that the weight of the swing causes this to go down and so water can get trapped inside of here. What you can do is slide this over and make a little cut right there inside of the tubing and that'll let any water pass out and into the PVC pipe to drip away harmlessly. And the rope. Notice that the dead end is to the inside of the swing and the live end is to the outside. That's for stability. Also, I gave a fourth wrap just as a height adjustment. And speaking of saddles being on the dead end, that's the expression. Don't saddle a dead horse, and that applies to these U-clamps. You want to keep the saddle to the live end, not to this side. This is the part that the U touches. All right, time for me to go down. Hope this was useful for you. If you're still curious, there's another video that takes a more in-depth look at the history and design of this swing. It does go at a slightly slower pace, but if you're interested, I invite you to follow the link.